So it's July, favourites time, and there's quite a few new things to show you this month, so I'm excited for that, and a little twist at the end. So let's kick it off. So the first product that I have been loving, and I would actually say this is probably my favourite of the whole month. I think this stuff rocks. It's like my favourite discovery, and it's the Orbe Maximista Thickening Spray. Can't get enough of this stuff. I've only had it like a few weeks, and it's already down to there because I go a bit crazy spraying this in, like it's probably a good like 10 or so spritzes each time I wash my hair. And this stuff is amazing, it's in between like a thickening spray and a sea salt spray because you still get the kind of dryness that a sea salt spray gives you and that kind of wavy texture, but then it also fattens up your follicles as well. So you're getting the volume, you're getting like a bit of wave, you're getting a bit of texture, you're getting that kind of matte finish to your hair, which I just love. But I just spray this in on a damp hair, I spray it kind of from the roots to the tips and then just shake my hair around, blow dry my hair, that is all I use. I don't use anything after it, anything else before it, just this stuff. And it actually has heat protection in as well, so it's like a heat protection spray and a thickener in one, like two thumbs up. And then I have some skincare bits and I feel a bit bad because I've been cheating on my M Hardy cleansing balm and I thought that day would never come but I'm still using it for my evening cleanse but for my morning cleanse I have found something new and it's the Zellens Radiance Luminous Facial Cleanser and this is just a cream textured formula that's kind of you just massage it in it's like a lotion almost and then you rinse it off your skin is super clean and it's just very light on the skin sometimes I was finding the Emma Hardy to be a bit heavy especially in the summer in the morning and in the evening but this is a nice choice for those of you who found the Emma Hardy a bit full on this is like a really nice strip back version of that that just cleans your skin but without that kind of balmy texture so it's gorgeous in the morning and smells really nice. I've been using quite a few things from Zellens and have been very impressed so far. And then there's been two eye products that I've been layering up twice a day and the first one is the Ula Henriksen Truth is in the Eyes and it's an eye pill concentrate that's a natural antidote for fatigued and wrinkled under eye tissue. Now the anti-aging benefits, it's too early to tell, I'll come back in like 15-20 years time and inform you on that one but this just feels really nice and light under the eyes and it's almost like using one of those AHA based products but for under your eye area which I don't tend to use like out for H kind of really close to the eyes but with this you can, you can just kind of, I put it on from like there to there and it just feels really nice and hydrating and I sort of haven't found an eye cream or an eye treatment or anything like that that I found to be super effective and I was getting quite dry patches around my eyes and this coupled up with this which I'm going to speak of next has really been doing an amazing job. I spoke, I think in my last favourites video I spoke about this to say that I've been having like psoriasis -y type eczema patches on my eyes and so many of you recommended this. It's the Pi, I think you say it, Etchium Anti-Aging Eye Cream. This stuff has got rid of my dry patches when I put it on, they're super happy, they go, it's just incredible. It's really light but really nourishing at the same time, but I just find that this leaves my eye area feeling nourished without feeling greasy at all. Sometimes eye creams can be really super greasy and then when you put eyeshadow over the top it just all goes to pop, but with this, these two it really doesn't. So I use the Ula more kind of under the eyes and then I use the pie kind of more on my dry patches on my lids that I've been having and then patted over the top as well and these two have been working really well. And I was really excited to show you those two products because that's a duo that I've kind of kept under wraps, been using for a few weeks and been having really good results with. So the cat's out the back. Now on to makeup and there's two products, one's an oldie and one's a newbie. And the first one is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light. I picked this up quite a few months ago, used it, thought it was good, but I bought um, Chanel Le Beige at the same time and that kind of like overtook it. That's become something that I carry around with me on a daily basis now. And so this kind of got a bit pushed to the side. But now the hot weather has been here and things have been heating up and I have been having to use the odd bit of powder to set my makeup and keep it in place. This has been coming in very, very handy indeed. It just sets your makeup but without looking too powdery, it kind of has a slight bit of radiance to it but without looking shimmery so it's a fantastic setting powder really for the summer months for people who don't usually like to wear powder and the shade diffused light has a slight yellowy undertone to it which helps to um, get rid of any redness in the skin as well. And then the next product is the Jouer Tint in Honeysuckle and I just love a good creamy, use on the lips, use on the cheeks product. They're just one of my favorite things, especially in a good peachy pink shade. <laughs> I love that. 
This is gorgeous. I got it on my cheeks today and I've been wearing it on my lips as well. It's so creamy, so blendable, just looks so natural on the skin. It just has a nice bit of sheen to it, but it doesn't look greasy at all. Definitely is not one of those cream to powder formulas. It's not like that at all. It still has that kind of glow when you apply it. And I found out about this because I got the Jouer Blushing Beauties collection, which is that palette that everyone's been going on about. I'll uh, pop my post to it below. And for me, the tint was just the standout of the palette. It was so tiny, got a really, really little sample of one of the shades, and I thought, I love that formula, so I'm gonna pick up another color in it, and I was not disappointed at all. And then keeping up with the pairs theme, I have two lipsticks, and one of them's an oldie, and one of them's a newbie again. And the oldie is actually my first ever MAC lipstick repurchase, and it's Shy Girl. I have so much love for this shade. It's just one of those colors that when you go to it, you don't need to think about it, you don't need a mirror to apply it, you can just throw it on. It's a nice mix of like a pink with a peach with a bit of brown in. It's like one of those nude colours that doesn't look too nude. I did a post about that actually. It's all about shades that lift your complexion instead of working against it and Shy Girl is top of that pile. And then the new one is from Urban Decay and it's from their revamped lipstick line which is called Revolution and I think there are 22 shades and they're out on the 5th of August. So a bit of a preview for you here, like one to put in your diary. And the shade that I've really been liking is Streak. And I was wearing it on my lips in my last video, wearing it on my lips in this video, I love it. This has created a whole new color category of its own in my collection. It is a bold, peachy pink. You know how I love a good peachy pink, but this is bold on the lips. It's very pigmented, it stands out quite a lot. It's very thick, but you can't really feel it on your lips at the same time. Just quite incredible, really. I've done a post on these, so I will link it up below, but I really, really like this shade. It's almost like a bold version of Max Cutter Caper, and you know how much love I have got for that. And then a nail colour because I just like to throw in whatever one has been most prominent on my nails that month and this month it's been all about this and it's the Bourjois One Second Gel Texture Nail Polish in the shade Turquoise Block. It's what I've got on my nails today, it's what I had on my nails in my last video, I'm not sure about the one before that but it's basically been on my nails since I discovered it. I just think it is gorgeous. It's the most amazing texture, the brush is just incredible. It like goes on so smoothly. It's kind of like a square, but then it's slightly rounded at the edges. You can get such a neat application with it. And then the formula, you really just need one coat. I've put on two coats today just for the hell of it, but one coat does it. I just think I need more shades in this line. And then a brush favorite, and I spoke about this on my blog this week, so I'll link that up below. And it's the Real Techniques Duo Fiber Face Brush from the new Duo Fiber collection, and that collection's been getting like a bit of flack. It's had a real mixed response, whereas all the other collections that um, Real Techniques have bought out, everyone goes crazy for. And I think these, because they're perfect for if you want a light application of something. If you want a really quite heavy, pigmented finish, you're not going to get that with these brushes. But for blush, I think this is amazing. I'm a real, like with blush, I'm like a flush floozy, like sometimes I love it, sometimes I don't, sometimes I don't even wear it for months. But with this, you can just get a really nice light application. It's kind of foolproof and with blush, I'm never really 100% sure where to put it. So I kind of just put it on and hope for the best. And with this, because it puts on such a light, like dust of application, it looks okay and it works really nicely with the um, the Jouer tint that I was speaking about. And then my final favourite is a bit of a random one and it's a cocktail which I think is a first for me. I don't think I've ever popped that in at the end of a video but I'm really not a massive drinker. I don't like wine, I don't like beer, I don't like vodka, I hate tequila. I will literally drink Amaretto, Southern Comfort and then Baileys at Christmas. <laughs> but for any of you who are over 18 I thought I would include my favourite tipple of the moment, which is Amaretto Sours, and this was inspired by a post by Gemma. I'll link up her post below, and she did a how-to of how she makes them. But whenever I go out, I always order them. I just think they're amazing. But why not just make your own at home? Now, I've modified this quite a bit from Gemma's recipe. She definitely does a slightly healthier version, and I definitely do not. But to start off, all you're going to need is a glass, kind of two-thirds full of ice, just slam it all in there, you need a lot of ice for this recipe. And then I take around a one shot, we haven't even got a shot glass in this house, so I kind of just do a bit of a guesstimate here, I take about one shot of Disarono, and then I put it into the ice. And then I take a lemon, I make a cute little garnish for the side, and then I squeeze it, and I really need to get a lemon juicer, I have not got one at the moment, so I just use 
all of my elbow grease and I just squeeze that into a little bowl. Then into the juice of half a lemon, I take around four teaspoons of caster sugar and I just give that a little mix. Obviously this is a bit of the recipe that you can change to your taste. I like mine quite sour but also with a bit of sweet in as well and I find that this is the perfect mix for me. So I just mix that up and then into each glass I take around three teaspoons of the mix and just pop it in. And then to finish it off I just fill it to the top with lemonade. I've used cloudy lemonade here but you can use whatever you've got hanging around. I give it a, like a little stir and it's ready to go and I just think it is so nice really refreshing evening like yes it's friday drink so i hope you like that something a little different on the end there but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon bye